trying to make for the sales, you could use auto fit. So like it's on the sales to fit whatever it is, and auto fill is to think up the formula to to whatever is in the cell. I think. Very good, Chazelle. Chazelle, you know, I'm very amazed at how much you're progressing compared to all the rest of students. That is exactly correct. Auto fit fits the cells, fits the column to the largest data in that cell. Remember, each column has data inside of it. And the largest data inside of any cell in that column when you auto fit, it's gonna go to that size. So for example, if I made column D as wide as it is right now, if I auto fit, in order to auto fit, you go between the lines of the cell, the columns. And if you double click here, it goes to the largest data, which is ship transport type. So that is why you would use auto fit so that you can fit the column. So instead of you dragging it all over the place to try to get it in line, you can easily auto fit and that will do it for you. So that is auto fit. Alia, you understand? Yes, sir. Good. Janacy joined and disappeared. Where's Janacy? Oh, Janacy is here. Janacy, are you here? Janacy? Now, autofill is when you want to copy information from one cell to another cell. So for instance, if we have 12 here and we want to put 12 straight down, we can highlight the cell, go to this small green here and click that and drag it downwards. That is autofill. When you're copying the data in one cell to other cells. Now, when you autofill, you can either copy what is inside the original cell or you can fill series basically meaning you can increment the number so if i click on here and i fill series it can increase the number by one Now, we're supposed to center the heading in columns A and B. So, if we get donations collected to auto to margin center, Gopal, what we will you do for donations collected? Sir, margin center. Sir, you just um, um, pull it over to B, then you can tap on margin center. So what pull it over to B? Sir, just hold on on the right, and click on the right, and then you will pull it over to B. No, yes, sir. sir. Yes, yes, sir. That's you a left click, not right click. Okay, sir. Then you can go for the margin center, right here. Good. So this here is called highlighting. So anytime you want to say to select something, you say highlight cell A and B or highlight cell C or whatever the case may be. You have to use the correct terms. 
This here is referred to as highlighting. You're highlighting here. Or you can say you are selecting. So you highlight here, you select the cells, and you select merge and center. Now to rename, most of you should know how to rename a sheet. You can either double click on the sheet and put in whatever name you want, or you can right click on it and you have the rename option. So they want us to give it the name of main. Now we have to highlight the heading in row three and make it bold. So these are some simple um, formatting and save it as donations. Save rows donations Good. now in the main sheet we are continuing the exercise in cell A10 we're typing we're looking at all of these functions um, let's see the only function we're going to look at is count if so that is we're going to type it in this cell here because you guys should know how to use sum min max and count is those are the simple ones average also we're going to look at count if and we're going to look at if as a refresher. So we always start with the equal sign, count if. We can double click on it and it will give us our bracket or we can easily type in our bracket. Now, any function, when you're typing it in, it shows you the criteria what parts make up this function it has two syntax two parts one is the range and one is the criteria for the count if so the range is the range of data that it is counting so in this case here is asking for e4 to e9 so we highlight that range the colon indicates indicating that it is a range. Then we put our comma to separate our syntax and we type our other syntax now. Now we're looking for a criteria. So a criteria, always remember the criteria is like a test question you are asking anytime you see the word criteria so in this case here criteria can come in different form criteria can be either you're looking for something more than so if you're looking for more than 12 or if you're looking for less than it could also be if you're looking for an exact value you just type that exact value if you're just looking for 12 you just type 12. So in this case here, we are looking for air. I think it's air. Yeah, we're looking for air. So what that means, we have to type the word air. But in this case here, we have to put it in quotation mark because we're telling it to look exactly for the word air. Putting something in quotation mark indicates that we are looking exactly for that value or whatever is inside of the bracket, um, the quotation mark. So it counted two words that are here and it has it brought back to. Let me try it without the quotation marks. You see you have there zero. So you need that quotation mark to tell it exactly what to look for. The next one we're going to look at is the if function. So if equal if 
This one has three syntax. If you look at it, look at the bottom here. It has a test. It has value if true and value if false. It has three parts. The first part is the test, or it's also called the criteria. So what are we testing? In this case here, it's asking us to test if B4 is less than quantity. Where is quantity? We're supposed to name F1 quantity. What's supposed to be in F1? All right, let's just make up something in F1. So, F1, we're going to type in 12%. So, here now in our formula, we type equal in our tests. Oh, we didn't name it as yet. So, Let's see, unique. If I want to name F1 quantity, what should I do? Um, sorry, you have to go to the name board and name right there. Where did I have the name? The name what you said? Name board. The name board. Yeah, I'm not so sure what, what it's called. Where is it located? Right on in the box on the top where F1 is. Right here? Here? Yes, sir. Good. So this is the name box. So, why isn't it showing up? Yeah. So if you have your car so over it, you see it is the name box. And here is where you can give a cell a name. So anything you want to do with a cell, you always highlight that cell or you highlight that range, anything you want to do. And that is how you add any feature to that cell or range. So we highlight our F1, we go to our name box and we give it the name of quantity. But if you notice before, it has a name of F1. But we want to change it to a name that we can commonly use, like QTY. So now, inside of our formula, when we type equal if, and we type B4, which is going to be that 12,000, if it is less than, or oh, this has to be a number. If it is less than, we can put... 5,000. 4,000. 4,000. Equal if B4 is less than, if you click on it now, we now have QTY instead of F1. Can anyone remember? By naming that range QTY, what kind of referencing is that? Malik. Malik? Yes, sir. Naming that range QTY, what do, what do we call that? What? Oh, cell reference. Sorry, cell reference. Which one is the cell reference? There's two cell reference. Wait, sir, please repeat yourself. Which one of the cell reference are we using right now? Sorry, one for names or letters, I guess. Not the one for values, then I guess I'm not good values. But 
Yeah. No, you know what I'm talking about. Not really. Anybody knows which one of the referencing are we using right now? Uh, absolute. Yes, we're using absolute addressing. So, equal if um, B4 is less than QTY and Mahima, why are we using absolute addressing? Pardon me, sir? Why are we using absolute addressing? Why is it necessary? Mm, I don't know. Narish. Thank you. Savir? Yes, sir. Um, sir, you're using absolute addressing because you only want, like, uh, none of that to change or something. None of them to change? What are we referring to with them? Um, sir, like the values, like when you offer fill. So, in this case here, what do we don't want to change? Sir, um, the 4,000. Good. So that is why we use absolute addressing. If we do not yeah. want a value to change, if we do not want the, cell, the name of the cell to change, we use absolute addressing. So in this case here, we want to see if for all of these items here, if all of them are less than 4,000. Because when, right, let me finish out the exercise. So if it is less than that, all right, we can just put a simple yes, else is going to be no. So remember the commas indicate um, the different syntax. It has three. The yes is a true part. If it is less than, we will get a yes. If it is not, which is false, we will get no, because that's the false part. So, in this case here, we got no. I'm going to put it over here. And when I bring it down now, I will get my answers here. So, in this case here, 12,000 is not less than 4,000. That is why I got a no, because it's false. 4950 is not less than four. That is why I got a no here. 4950. And uh, if we look at the formula, we will see that the B4 changed to B5 then to B6, then B7, and B8. What kind of addressing is that? Um, Nicholas? Yes, sir. What kind of addressing is that? When B4 changes to B5, then B6, when you autofill? Yes, uh, sir, absolute addressing. No. No, I mean rel relative addressing. Relative addressing. The one with the QTY not changing, that is absolute. Think about the word. Absolute means it does not change. Relative means that it is changing based on relatively wherever it is going. So B4 is going to change to B5 because it's now inside of that row. B6 is going to change to B4 is going to change to B6 because it is now inside of row 6. So it changes relative to wherever it goes. If I copy it now 
and I paste it at the bottom here Notice the B4 changed to E12 because it is now in, why did it change to E? Well, because it's relative to wherever it was, it was um, before. So B4 was 4, four cells away, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 cells away. So when I paste to the bottom here now, this here is now four cells away. That's why it's E12. So relative goes to when you paste it, it's relative to wherever the original was created. And absolute, it does not change. Only relative changes. Alright, quick question. Why is this date here left align and the rest right align? Fancy. Fancy. Jonathan? Sorry, can I hear you now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Sorry, sir. I don't know really. Actually, a very simple answer. Jasmine. Sir, it's because of the way dates are formatted. Very good. Continue. There aren't 15 months in a year. Very good. So, remember any data in your spreadsheet has a formatting option. At the top here, we have formatting for any, any cell that you have in your spreadsheet. And for this date here, the formatting default for date is month first, then day, and then year. So if we change this to 12, notice it's right aligned now because 12 is the last month. So if you want to change your formatting, you go to your number formats and you change it based on these options here. So if you notice by default, it says here 314. The 14 is indicating that that is the day because obviously there is no 14 month. So by default, that is the formatting for date. So one thing to always remember when you are typing data in your spreadsheet, always format that data now we're going to quickly look at pmt so let's see loan amount interest years repayment so we're gonna have thirty thousand seven point two five percent five years and this is going to be monthly repayment and yearly repayment i'm hoping you guys remember all of this so equal pmt 
that is the function you use when you want to calculate loan the monthly the loan repayment so PMT notice the, um, the syntax at the bottom here so the rate the rate is how much interest you have to pay back that's gonna be this 7.25 percent here how much you have to pay back at what rate comma the next part here is the number per year basically or the period that you have to pay back so that's gonna be the five years and we have to divide our interest by 12 and then multiply our years by 12 in order to convert them into years simple maths if we divide a yearly percentage this interest here is yearly this is a yearly interest and in our formula we have to divide this rate by 12 so that we can get it for each month how much we have to pay back for each month comma the years we have to convert that to months so five years if you multiply that by 12 months we will get our years and then the amount that we have to pay back the 30,000 that's gonna be 597 each month now if I want for years I basically don't have to do any conversion so the same PMT I put my interest rate 7.25 no conversion so I'm getting for year I put my years which is this cell here D14 no conversion again because I'm looking for years and then my interest how much I took close and that is how much I will be paying yearly so when you want monthly you do your conversion convert everything to the months and when you want yearly you leave it as it is All right, so we looked at naming a range. At any time you want to name a range, you simply highlight that range, just like how we would have selected this cell and give it the name of quantity. You highlight that range and you type in the name at the top here. So this is now the services range. So if I go to my name box and I select the name, it now highlights that range the trail the trail Yes, sir. Where do I go to delete that name range now? Sir, to the name manager. So where is the name manager? Sir, I can't really see property cards like using So where should I click? You tell me where to click.
Sir, I is um, sir, I search with in the to do box. In the what to do box. What to do? So just type in name manager. Yeah. So wait, wait if this box is disappearing now, what are you gonna do? Sir, it can disappear, sir. It's out there on there. Okay. I pray that one day it disappears. Well. So name manager is found under formulas and you have your name manager right here. So you simply highlight the range and you can delete it from here. You could even you could even edit it from here. So if you still want to keep the range, you can edit it right here and give it another name. So this 4000 now, now became the name of services. And when you change the name of a range, it also changes where you would have used that name. I think I deleted the formula. All right, let's see what else we're looking at. Oh, we have a nice one. We're gonna look at VLOOKUP. So, with VLOOKUP, I want, I'm gonna use back, these item names i'm going to use them over here and uh, i want the amount received for each items to come over so vlookup let's look at the syntax vlookup has four syntax as a lookup value it has the table array which is the range you are looking at. So the lookup value is what value you're looking for. The array is where you're looking. So you give it a range and the column number is the column in that range that you want to bring back. And then you're gonna put true or false if the table was sorted or not. So in this, in this case here, what would be my lookup value? Jamani? Pardon me, sir? What would be my lookup value? What am I looking for? So I didn't to see the part, you know. Savitri, I think you were going to answer. So water. I'm looking for water. So I already said that this table here, I am bringing over, I'm using this same table here. I am bringing over the items received, these receive amounts. So this same table over here. So my lookup value, VLOOKUP, is going to be water because I'm looking for water. So what cell would, would that be? A2. A2. Am I looking at the water over here? Or should I look at the water over here? Because a lot of persons get that mixed up. Try the water on sheet two. Right. So wherever you are creating the VLOOKUP, the lookup value is actually, it's going to always be in that same table you are creating it. So you're not going to look at the water over here you're gonna be looking at the water inside of this table here. So that's gonna be cell A2. Now, comma, we want the table array. The table array 
is the range so where the data is located we didn't give it a name so you could also highlight that range some of you would have done that but it's best practice to give the name give this um, the range a name so in our case we could have highlighted all of it give it the name of service I already used that name um, you give it the name of amount so equal VLOOKUP A2 is going to be a lookup value we're looking for water comma the name range which is amount because that's the table we're looking at that we just named and the column the column is in that range which column do we want to bring over so in our case it's going to be column 2 and then true or false if the values in that table was sorted so see the instructions are right here true the values in the first column in the table array must be sorted in ascending order so this is what we would have been correcting in our SBA because in the instruction this table here the item table would have been sorted in our situation so in our case we would have had to use true but if we look at our table here it is not sorted the first column in that range in the services range and the service the amount is not sorted is the first column in that range whether it is sorted or not and it's not sorted so we have to put false so when I copy this down now I can bring over all of the values for each item in that range so if water is to change now so 220 million then over in sheet 2 it will also change to 20 million so you don't have to worry about if you are mistyping any information because you just have to worry that it is correct in one location and it will reflect in the other location that's the importance of VLOOKUP So the other thing we're going to look at is formatting. Now, when you have tables and you want to present the information to someone, it is always best to format that information. When you go to the Home tab, the Home tab is by default. All of these options that you have here are for your formatting options. You have the font section. All of this deals with the font. You have the alignment section and you have the number section. The number section can be used to format numbers so that it can represent exactly what you want. So if in this case you wanted it to be percentage, you can click on the percentage symbol and you have it appearing as percentages. Or if you want it in um, currency format, Normally we use currency instead of accounting. So we can change the appearance 
of our numbers. Now, if we want to remove decimal places, we have the options right here. Or we can add as how much we need. Now, if we don't need um, dollar signs, but we just want the commas, notice we have the comma here. So we can have that comma so that we can see the um, individual columns for the numbers so that we can tell whether it's a thousand, a million, and so on. Now when it comes to headings, we can have different options at the top here of how we align our headings. And then we can change font and all of that fancy stuff. All right, we're going to end here for today. Tomorrow, we're going to continue with the exercises on sorting, and we're going to go from that there. If you guys don't have any question on anything that we covered today, you are free to leave. Enjoy the rest of your day. Same to you, sir.